Good morning. Welcome to the Cone Zone. That is the famous Lowell Cone. I am the less famous Grant Cone. The draft <laughs> is a few weeks away. The pro day, the team's pro day, local pro day, is tomorrow. I'll be there, and that's going to be big news. But first, we got to talk about what what the Cones think the Niners should do in the draft. How you doing, Dad? I'm doing fine. I, actually, Iggy, you're a lot more famous than I am. I, I'm I'm the former Lowell Cone. No, 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 no. There's never been a former Lowell Cone. You are still the very famous. You look great, by the way. How you, you, you need a little bit of a haircut, though. You got to get your haircut this week. I'm, I'm trying to get one tomorrow. Daniel. Daniel, Daniel. take care of you. Daniel, yeah, if you're I, watching, I, shout out I, Daniel. Also, shout out Guy Haberman. Big fan of the show. We're a big fan of Guy Haberman. Just wanted to throw that out there. Okay. I like Guy very much. Me too. I like Guy. The Niners have Brock Purdy. They also have Joshua Dobbs and Brandon Allen. Uh, do you think quarterback is still a need for the 49ers? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so let me, uh, let's get serious. Um, I don't think it's the biggest need that they have in the draft. I think uh, a tackle, offensive tackle, is the biggest need they have in the draft. But I think they should draft a quarterback every year. Mm. Okay, because let's look. Let's be real serious about this. I I think Purdy is wonderful. I love to watch him play. Okay, the other two guys. Well, the third guy, Brandon Allen, is is a guy. Mm -hmm. As I remember, I remember to say he's a guy. And Joshua Dobbs is acceptable, acceptable for a half, a quarter, maybe one or two games in a pinch, but he's not going to lead them to to a Super Bowl or even the playoffs. They need another good quarterback all the time. They need to be developing a quarterback because Purdy could get hurt. Yeah. Quarterbacks get hurt. Yeah. And they need their project is always you got Joe Montana, develop Steve Young. Yeah. They should be developing their Steve Young. You know what was really funny? Um, the last few years, how many times the Niners talked about their quarterback room? Yeah over and over and over again like the starter it wasn't all about the starter it was about the strength and numbers now that they got brock purdy they don't talk about that room anymore i, I mean know. that yeah it that was it was, was baloney good. but that's what we're talking about like your room is brandon allen who is a third string quarterback but probably should be a fourth string quarterback or a coach and then you got josh dobbs who's a second string quarterback but probably should be a third string quarterback right. so you don't really have a backup that's promising good and you could if you drafted a quarterback. This is the same team that drafted Brock Purdy. Yeah, and you don't have to draft them high. Look where they got Brock Purdy. It right. doesn't have to be in the first round. It yeah. could be way toward the end. Yeah. It turns out a lot of these guys that you get toward the end of the draft are actually NFL ready. Yep. They right. may not have the measurables that, you know, with the stopwatch and, and this right. and all, all that stuff, but they can ball. They can ball. Yeah. Brock the thing Purdy about the guys with measurables is that they usually go into the draft early before they're ready because they yeah. have the measurables. And then they go to a team that isn't good and they fail and everyone's surprised. The, the, the Niners clearly aren't looking for a tall quarterback or a fast quarterback or a strong-armed quarterback. There's specific traits they're looking for. And they found it once. They might be able to find it again. I should say they would be able to find it again. And so I'm going to be um, real clear here. They would be foolhardy not to draft a quarterback in the upcoming draft. It would be foolhardy. They need one. They need a live one on the roster. And then the next year, they should draft another one to compete with that guy. Yeah, Bill Walsh said you should draft a quarterback every year. I think it's a good strategy, especially when you've had success getting quarterbacks as late as the 49ers have. Like, What, what harm would it be to, to spend a seventh-round pick on a quarterback or a sixth-round right. pick? Yeah, Right. And remember, Joe Montana was a third-round pick. Right. And again, we're talking upside here. Me and my dad, they, we love that word. Upside. Upside. Yeah, upside. You know, Josh Dobbs doesn't have much. No offense. You know what he's going to do. Brandon right. Allen has none. Just a little upside in the quarterback room would be nice. I agree. And competition. Real competition. competition. There must have been a lot of competition uh, when uh, Joe and Steve were in that room. And I'll tell you what else. When Alex Smith and JT O'Sullivan were in that room, there was competition. I know there yeah. was. And, and that's well, good. So let's bring it back to Brock Purdy. Forget Josh Dobbs and Brandon Allen for a second. They may for serve certain functions for the 49ers, but they're not 
providing competition for Brock Purdy. Joe no. Montana benefited from Steve Young's competition. Brock Purdy would benefit from some competition, and he had it the last two years. This is the first year he really doesn't. Good point. Good yeah. point. Yeah. yeah. So we're talking about wisdom here. Yeah. We're talking about wisdom. And so, John Lynch, if you're, you know, we know you're watching and you never miss us. We're, we're talking to you. And I think the wise thing is not to say, boy, we got Purdy was set for the next 10 seasons because, John, you don't know. He could get hurt bad. He once did. Yeah. Um, you, you always have to replenish that position. Yeah. And you think Brock Purdy's your franchise quarterback for the next 15 years today, but you don't know what you're going to think of him in 12 months. Funny things yeah. happen in sports all the time. Yeah. 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 A uh, couple super chats. Well, first, Guy Haberman says, shout out to all the barbers. Shout out to Montclair Barbershop. Shout out to I'm Daniel, all the barbers. Peyton Diaz says, what's good, Grand Papa Cone? You a legend. Oh, Try to tell you, Dad. You. My dad used to have uh, billboards and stuff in San Francisco. 80s. And yeah, I did. I used to have Guy. billboards. I never billboard. When I get a billboard, I'll be on your level. <laughs> Brother Pop says, Papa Cohn, always great to see you. One of my favorite shows with your son, Iglet. What Iglet. percentage likelihood do you think Kyle Levy will win a Super Bowl as the Niners head coach? He's now Kyle Under Levy 50. because he's Marv Levy. I know. He didn't, uh, he didn't become Jewish. I understand. <laughs> um, for me, under 50%. I, I, you know, I, I'll believe it when I see it. And the point is, the two Super Bowls he lost with the Niners, let's forget before that. Mm -hmm. He... He didn't get beat. He lost them. Yeah. He screwed up. He beat himself. So I don't have a 51% confidence in him. Right. So he's been in three Super Bowls, one as a coordinator. In all three, he had leads. And in all three, it seemed like he beat himself. But in the first two, he had excuses. When he was in Atlanta, he could say, well, I'm not the head coach. What about Dan Quinn's defense? Which is fair. Then when he lost the first one with the Niners, he could say, well, Jimmy Garoppolo is my quarterback. He had throws that were open. What do you want me to do? Which was also kind of fair. But this last one, there's nothing he could say. He had the best team. He had a really good quarterback. He had the lead in overtime. He didn't know the rule. He freaking blew it. Yeah. And he should have won the game in, in uh, regulation time. Yep. I mean, he only scored 19 points. This is, again, everybody, the default position that I hear from coaches is he is the greatest offensive mind in the game right now mm -hmm. really 19 points the mm -hmm. greatest offensive mind oh mm -hmm. okay all right also he doesn't even try to win with his offense if you think about it so they had the ball fourth and four at the chiefs nine in overtime and if you really believe in your offense you go for it on fourth down because you're going to yeah. win the game right there like the chiefs would do but no he kicks a field goal because he believes in his special teams and then he says steve wilkes bring it home like what are you talking about are, are you an offensive coach or what? You, win the game with your team, with, with your side right now. Yeah. yeah. And he said yeah. to Steve, bring it home with the defense that was gassed. Yeah. Uh-huh. Which he even admitted was gassed. Okay, moving on. Yesterday I wrote a, an article on SI.com, plugging my, my website, SI.com slash NFL slash 49ers, asking, is Brock Purdy a top-tier quarterback? Posted it on Twitter, and one person replied, be careful. Look at how Jimmy Garoppolo fell apart with the Raiders and keep in mind that the 49ers have a very quarterback-friendly system. Uh, Brock Purdy is 17-4 and four as a starter. He's had one of the best starts to a career of all time for a quarterback. Does Jimmy Garoppolo's um, career arc, should it give the 49ers any pause or should they just go all in with Brock Purdy? Well, they are going to go all in with Brock Purdy, but what we've already said is they should have someone in the backup role who's good. Yeah. Um, but th the question is, because Jimmy couldn't function at all, really, outside of that system, um, does that mean that really Brock Purdy is sort of Jimmy too? And if you took him out of that system, he wouldn't be as good. Well, if you took him out of that system, he wouldn't be as good. If you took Joe Montana out of that system, he wouldn't be as good. I've told you. The Raiders, Bill uh, Walsh was talking to Al Davis about trading Joe. I think Joe must know this. I know it for a fact. And Al Davis said, we don't want Joe. Uh, our, our wide receivers will outrun his arm. We want Steve Young. Mm -hmm. And Bill said, 
not on your life. So, of course, Brock Purdy would not function as well outside of the Niners system. But he's a much better quarterback than Jimmy Garoppolo. Much better. And I'm going to say why. He's mobile. Jimmy Gar- Garoppolo has the mobility of a refrigerator. <laughs> um, he sure. makes very good decisions fast. Jimmy made a lot of bad decisions and made them slow. Mm-hmm. He oftentimes was a one read quarterback and Mm -hmm. Brock Purdy is a three read quarterback. One of the best I've ever seen. So what I'm saying is if you put him on another team, but emphasized what he could do well, he would succeed at most teams in the league. Jimmy, if you emphasized what he did well, would not do well. Plus Jimmy is through. Jimmy, mm-hmm. um, when he came to the Niners, he was better than he is now. Jimmy is on the verge, really, of being out of the league. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's he a shot. backup on the Rams with no shot of playing. He's just holding the clipboard now. He's not even competing. Right. Um, he's, and that happens fast. Player. It yep. wasn't even a year and a half ago that he was starting for the 49ers after Trey Lance went down and winning games and putting up yeah. relatively good numbers, although we we all knew that Jimmy Garoppolo wasn't as good as his numbers and his – and his record, but it's interesting. Remember, the Jimmy Garoppolo arc, when he first came here, he took over a team that was 1-10. in 10. He won five games in a row. Everyone thought he was like working miracles, even though when you watched him, it seemed like he was limited. He was 18-3 and three at one point. I mean, his arc and Purdy's arc are very similar, except for the fact that they're different quarterbacks. They both had instant success. They both got hurt pretty quickly. They both came back and then went to the Super Bowl and lost it. And then we know what happened to Jimmy Garoppolo after that. He kind of got figured out. The league had seen enough after about a year and a half, and the book on him was pretty sophisticated, and he got a little bit worse and worse and worse and got hurt and hurt and hurt. So I don't know. Is that going to happen to Brock Purdy? I guess we'll find out how he responds from from this point on. There's been about 21 games of him on film. We'll see what the what NFL defensive coordinators can do. I mean, they did a pretty good job against him in the playoffs. They didn't make him look bad, but he wasn't dominant. And one of the things they did is they played man-to-man defense against him. Yes, yes, which is a better option because against zone coverage, he can sort of anticipate the openings and throw to spots, and he's good at that. But against man-to-man coverage, you kind of have to fit the ball into tight areas, and yeah. maybe arm talent comes into play a little bit more than that. So we're going to learn. Yeah. Um, we're going to learn that uh, – whether the league has figured him out and whether he can make the Joe Montana could make every throw. He could put it exactly where you wanted it. And we're going to see if Purdy can or can't. My guess is he can, but what I like what you're doing is you are raising not a problem, but a question. Yeah. And it's fair to raise the question. And I think what's going in the 49ers favor is that they have a whole nother season to gain evidence. Yet, they don't I, say what you said again. I, the first part you, uh, I couldn't. Okay. They have an entire, they have this upcoming season to gain the evidence they need. Am I, am I, am I falling apart? You're okay now. They have the upcoming season to gain the evidence they need. They don't I have agree. to extend him down. With Jimmy Garoppolo, they had to extend him after his seventh start. They didn't have a choice. They traded for him knowing he was going to be a free agent. He won five starts. They're in a tough spot. With Brock, they can wait. And if they feel like they don't have the information after this year, they could give him, they could make him play on the fourth year of his rookie deal. They could franchise tag him after that. They could take as long as they want, uh, theoretically. And they need to be absolutely 100% positive that he's special before they give him all that money. And they can. Yeah. uh, And I hope they will. Iggy, do you consider him an elite quarterback in the league? Uh, Because I want to say I I do. No. I would say he's right. Like if there were tiers of quarterback and tier yeah. one is elite, I'd put him in tier two, which is very good. Who would you put above him? I would put Mahomes, Allen, Burrow, Lamar, Stafford, um, Stroud, and Rogers. Those seven. And the guy on the uh, the Chargers, he would be eight. So there are he hasn't eight. Won a lot. Eight. He hasn't won a lot, but it's not necessarily his fault. Okay. So forget the guy in the charges, but I think he's really good. He is. I mean, um, so, so you're saying if you had a top 10, mm-hmm. 
Purdy might sneak in at the bottom of the top 10. I would agree but with you're, that. But you're saying really it's about the top seven that's elite. I think so. Uh, but look, he's still relatively young in his career. He does have limitations that I don't think the guys in the elite uh, tier have, but maybe he'll prove me wrong this year. Okay. All right. Yeah. So yeah. one of the interesting things going forward into next season is it's really a test of, among other things, of Purdy. How good is this guy? My gut feeling is he's going to come out of it as in, in the top seven or the eighth of the top seven. And you're saying, I'd like to wait and see. Yeah, I would like to wait and see because um, the, the playoff performances were instructive. He wasn't dominant. He wasn't bad. And the Jimmy Garoppolo career arc can't get out of my head. He was great okay. at first and teams kind of figured him out. Is that going to happen to Brock Purdy? Because although he's different than Jimmy, he does have limitations. I agree. Yep. Okay, let's talk about the upcoming draft. The Niners have picked 31. It's their first first round pick in three years since they drafted Trey Lance. We both feel they should take an offensive tackle with this pick for a lot of no reasons. No question. No question. But let's explain that, and I'll give you a name. If the 49ers are at picks 31 and they don't trade up and this guy is available, they should take Tyler Guyton, offensive tackle from Oklahoma. And what I like about this guy is he, can, he has the athleticism to play right tackle or left tackle. And the way I look at it is it's not just a need at right tackle for the 49ers. Yeah, Colton McKivitz isn't that good. He gave up 13 sacks last year, and you could definitely do better. Trent Williams is 36 in July. If he misses half a season with he, he usually misses about a quarter of a season to the injury to injuries. If he misses half a season due to injury because he's 36, the Niners are screwed. Absolutely screwed. They're as good as he is. They're as viable as, as he is healthy. So they need to have like a better backup for Trent Williams. They need to start developing someone to take his place when he retires. So Tyler Guyton from Oklahoma. That's the same school that Trent Williams went to. Interesting. Yeah. Um, okay. Let me say, first of all, I totally agree with you. So we're on the same page. But the more important question is, if it comes that that guy is available at 31, we know the Niners should draft him or someone like him. Do you think they will? No. Why? I think they've demonstrated for years that they just don't value the offensive line like they value the defensive line. Like... If they could find a guy, a backup defensive tackle, they would draft that guy over a starting offensive tackle in round in round one. I agree. Yeah, I agree. They would, and it's a mistake. And we're trying to help yeah. them. If you're watching, don't do it again. Yeah. So I I, I want to make this uh, broadcast thematic. We were talking about getting a quarterback, and we said it, it would require wisdom. Yeah. To do that. To draft this guy at 31 would require wisdom. Right. So I guess what, what I'm saying about the Niners is in order to have a really successful draft, aside from football acumen, they have to have real life wisdom, I which agree. is harder to get. Yep. There's more. I mean, just look at it this way. I think the Niners can be kind of arrogant sometimes and they act like, well, our team is so good that we're not really drafting for this year. Let's draft for next year because our team is just set. But th this might be the last year of their current Super Bowl window with this core of players. You need someone who can make an impact now. And if you take a defensive lineman, any defensive lineman you take at 31, is he going to be better than Leonard Floyd or Malik Collins or Javon Hargrave? Like, is that guy really going to play? But Tyler Guyton right now is better than Colton Kivitz and eventually could be your starting left tackle. It just seems like it would make such a bigger impact to have someone. You could definitely find an offensive tackle who's better than Colton McKivitz in round one. Can you find a defensive tackle who's better than McLeek Collins or a DN who's better than Leonard Floyd? I don't know about that. Yeah, yeah. How do we get this message through the 49ers? Let's write John Lynch an email. <laughs> Let's text him. Dad, I you're a little blurry. I think you got to give your camera a little spit shine. Really? Yeah. How do I do it? Hold on. There you go. I'm still yeah. blurry. He's still blurry. I don't know what's going on with that. Maybe I'm fading. <laughs> what, like uh, Back to the Future? 
Brother Bob says, Papa Cone, you're generous with less than 50%. I think it's 0%. I guess that's Kyle Shanahan's chance of winning. It, um, <laughs> zero. Uh, that's, so, that's hard. Um, NorCal Refrigeration says, mobility of a refrigerator, belly laughing on job site. Thanks, Lowell. That's NorCal I'm Refrigeration. Glad I, I, <laughs> I'm glad I gave you a laugh. Daza0187 says, if Brock Purdy repeats what he did last year, is he really worth 50 plus million? You can draft quarterbacks. Once you pay Brock Purdy like an elite quarterback, you then have to build the team around him. What would be interesting if they actually gave Brock Purdy a bunch of money, they might actually build an offensive line at that point because money's involved. Um, look, I think he's a really good quarterback, but you know, Iggy, I do have to say, I am fading here. I do have mm -hmm. to say in the, in the playoffs, he was not outstanding. He didn't no. lose the Super Bowl, but he wasn't outstanding. In his defense, neither was Debo, neither was Ayuk, neither was Kittle, like neither, the whole offense wasn't that great. It wasn't just him. So I think we we have more to learn about Brock Purdy, and I'm still I'm still high on him. I think he's very good as well. You think he's elite? He may be. Fish and chips. Lil Shanny is fool's gold. Hi, Lil. Hi, fish and chips. All right, let's do some sleeper picks for today's Giants game, Dad. You're gonna be watching, right? I probably will. You know, it I, it's funny. I I don't watch that much sports anymore, but I'm interested in what the Giants have put together, if anything. Okay, so we got Harrison pitching today. Kyle Harrison? Yeah. Four and a half strikeouts, two and a half earned runs, five and a half hits allowed, one and a half walks. How do you feel about Kyle Harrison? He's the guy from De La Salle. He's local. Yeah. yeah. He's lefty. He's yeah. really a competitor. He's gifted. He's still very young and a little raw, and he's guaranteed to give up at least three runs in the time that he's pitching. So okay. what is the, what, what are we betting on? Two and a half earned runs. What's the pick more or less more, more. more. Okay. How about Yastrzemski to have no hits? That one worked for me yesterday. <laughs> Poor Yastrzemski. He has one hit. I think he has one hit so far yeah. this season. So uh, we're saying, will he go uh, over tonight? Yeah. Yeah, sure. I, I, think, I think, yeah, why not? I would think, yeah. Uh, any more Giants you, you like for, for today? Conforto, Estrada, Solaire, Wade? Oh, hold on, hold on. How about yeah. the third baseman? Chapman. He's really a player. Now, he's a great fielder. He has been a really good hitter. Um, he's got one hit in the last so three games. Yeah, not so far. So what are we betting on with uh, Chapman? We're just picking. No betting. We're just picking. Uh, that's what we call it here at Sleeper Picks. We're uh, oh, picking, picking. Picking. I'm sorry. Um, it's okay. We're picking. We could pick whatever we want. We could do hits. Will he get one? Home runs. Will he have one? Strikeouts. These are all at point five. Uh, okay. Yeah. What about hits? How do you feel? Do you think he's going to get off the schneid today? Is he due? I think he'll he'll get a hit. He's due? Yeah, he's okay. due. He'll let's get a hit. Before we finish, let's get one. What? Otani. Let's just do Otani for fun. One and a half hey. hits for Otani today. What do you think? Who's he playing? Doesn't matter. Minnesota. Okay. <laughs> Minnesota. <laughs> one and a half hits for Otani. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to say no. You know what, Iggy? I think Otani has a lot of things on his mind. <laughs> he may. He absolutely yeah. may. Let's I think he has a lot of stuff on his mind. Let's lock it in. All right. Sleeper picks. You want to play? Use the QR code. Use, use the code COHN and get the deposit match up to $500. Not dollars. 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 Okay, a couple of days ago on the uh, Grant Cohn show, which I've done two episodes of, it's just me, I talked about my favorite and least favorite players I've covered on the team, at least the team last season. Talano Hofunga being my favorite. Eric Armstead being my least favorite. My dad was inspired by the segment and would like to share his favorite and least favorite 49ers he's ever covered. Yeah, and I, 
have known a lot more 49ers than Iggy has uh, in my almost 40 years of doing this. I, I noticed that the ones that I really like are from the teams when the 49ers used to win, super, when they were a Super Bowl winning team, not mm -hmm. an almost Super Bowl winning team. So, okay, I'm going to say my favorite, but I'm going to add other people afterward. My favorite is Steve Young. Um, why do I like Steve Young? He's generous. He's sincere. He's a nice guy. Mm -hmm. He's fascinating. He's really smart. He's one of the only athletes I've ever met in my life who says, hey, what's how you doing? Um, what have you been doing lately? And he actually means it. Most mm -hmm. athletes, and you have to understand this, people who are watching this, they're young men. I, I, I'm, they're also young women, but I'm mostly covered men. So I'm going to say they're, they're young men. They're very self-involved. They've been encouraged to be self-involved. Mm -hmm. Steve, even when he was young, was in that way. What's going on, Lowell? You know, how's your family? All kind of stuff like that. This is rare um, for an athlete to just come out of out of the blue and ask you, uh, first of all, know your name and ask you yeah, about your life. Tala Noah's that way. Hafunga. Hey, Grant, how you doing? It's touching, isn't it? It, it is. It's touching. It's like there's like one guy on the team at a time who will be like that. <laughs> one at a time out of 53. Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. And Steve's that way. And the other thing is, and then you say, well, maybe he did it because he wants to suck up to the media. And that's fair. So I would talk to sometimes to people I knew around the team. And they said, the Steve you see is the Steve we see. Hmm. That's how Steve is. Yeah. So I would have to say he's my all-time favorite. But Iggy, if you don't mind, I have some other names. Okay. That I, I, for, I made a list this morning because I knew we were going to talk about it. And the first three who came to my mind were tight ends. Mm. And I'm going to tell you who. Charlie Young, Russ Francis, and Brent Jones. And mm. I thought, why this attraction to tight ends? And I realized they're hybrids. They're offensive linemen, but they're also wide receivers. Mm -hmm. So they have a very large picture of the game, a very mm -hmm. large. They're generally among the most intelligent guys on the team. They're generally individualists. They generally yeah. are on their own. Yes. And they have a perspective on everybody else. And everyone that I just named, because they're individualists, love to talk to the media because they like to say what they want to say and they're not afraid to say it. Kittle's very so, much of an individualist. Yes. yes. I, I feel that if, again, I've never met Kittle, but if I were covering the team, I bet he and I would have a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. With one one caution, all the three I named were entirely sincere. Mm -hmm. I just don't know about Kittle. Sometimes I think he has an act. Mm -hmm. Kind of like remember Brian Wilson with the Giants. Yes, yes. remember he had the, the beard and the and the, his whole the way he would talk to the media. It was funny, but it was also an act. It was. It was yeah. an act. Yeah. I also think he was a good guy. So I'm going to give Kittle. Kittle could be a good guy too. Yeah. Yeah. I think he has a shtick, but I yeah. think he falls in with these other tight ends. And you could, he is, in a sense, the biggest character on the 49ers. Yes. Yeah. He's an absolute and, character. Are there other characters on the 49ers right now? He is He is the one. Certainly not the quarterback. Not The quarterback's not a character, which is kind of nice. No. Yeah. Certainly not yeah. the quarterback. It's not his job to be a character. That's the tight end's job. <laughs> Iggy, you could answer it better than me if there are characters. I don't know these people. I think it's Kittle. Kittle. He's a little larger than life. Yeah. And yeah. and you want someone like that. It's terrific yeah. that he's like that. Yeah. He has a twinkle in his eye. Yeah. Also, I feel he's very intelligent. He can Extremely. analyze ball. And I wouldn't be surprised if he ended up being a play uh, no, a, a color commentator when he's in his late thirties, early forties, like Greg Olson. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, Greg Olson. Okay. Like better so than I'm Greg gonna, Olson. But that's another tight end who explains the game well. Almost he, too too much. Ap, with the thing with Greg Olson, real quick, he is really good. He is really yeah. bright. He just talks too much. Yeah. He needs to take a deep breath. Slow down. Name use fewer words. Yeah. Yeah. If he were in a writing class with me, I would say, 
you need to, to tone it down a little bit. You need yeah. to take out some of these adjectives. You need a shorter paragraphs, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Others. I made a list of guys who just my heart goes out to. Mm -hmm. Dwight Clark. I loved uh, Dwight, mm -hmm. and uh, I miss him. Ronnie Lott. He made my life so interesting when I was covering him. He is such a uh, phenomenal person. Eric Wright. Whenever I meet Eric Wright now, he was a, 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 a safety. He was a great player. He's such a sweet, interesting man. Keith Fonhorst, you probably don't remember. He was the left tackle on Super Bowl teams. He died, what, about two years ago, Iggy? Mm -hmm. um, you two spoke to him two, two weeks before I he did. died. He was so sweet. Dwight Hicks, Randy Cross, Tom Homo, who uh, is now the um, athletic director at BYU. And I'm, I'm leaving people out, but uh, I would have to say my memory of the Niners, when I think about them, I think about these people that I liked and got something from. And that, of course, includes Bill Walsh. Yeah. Jimmy Ward is also another one I love covering. He's not on the team anymore. He was great. Um, okay, least favorite. Oh, that is so easy for me. Colin Kaepernick. Um, yeah. And I'm going to say why. Um, in his private life, he may be a nice person. I'm not saying he is. I'm saying he may be. I have no idea. I can only say how he presented to the media. He presented to the media as a snot nose. Yeah. He was yeah. a snot nose. Yeah. And I'm not talking about his political beliefs. Yeah, that was later. That that's was later. Whole, yeah. That's a whole other thing, and yeah. I don't want to get into it. He was rude. Yeah. He was condescending. Yeah. He was mean. Difficult. He was difficult. Yeah. With, I mean, I'm thinking, I covered Joe Montana, and I yeah. covered Steve Young, and this putz, yeah. this putz is acting like this? What the hell did he ever achieve? After a Joe, few starts, like 24, 25 years yeah. old, it was incredible. Oh, yeah, he was awful. And then when he got on his political thing, and I'm not going to evaluate it. I don't want to get into that discussion. Chip Kelly was the coach. And what happened was every time you went in to the locker room, people would go over to, to this Kaepernick because they knew he couldn't shut up about how awful America is. And so what would happen during the week and after games, which was even worse, instead of talking football, this guy's talking about the, the systemic this and, and, and the, the oppressor. And so what happened was the Niners locker room became a source of political discussion, not football discussion. I think Kaepernick had a hell of a nerve to do that. Um, if Bill Walsh, I told you, Bill Walsh before the season would say, in our locker room, we talk football. We don't talk religion. We don't talk politics. If you want to, you can go to Buffalo. I know it. I know he did that. Yeah. So, and I want to yeah, say one other. Let me just finish this, Iggy. So I thought he had a hell of a nerve to put that on his teammates and to put that on the media. And who abetted him was Chip Kelly, who I don't know. I mean, he already left uh, UCLA after being mediocre there. I think he's, I think he is a social moron. I don't mean he's stupid, but I think Chip Kelly is a social moron. And when I asked him in one press conference, why do you let your quarterback take over the room? He's not talking football. He says, oh, we have free speech in here. And like it was a good thing. He didn't. He lost the locker room to this snot nosed quarterback. So I would have to say um, uh, I've never disliked a 49er the way I disliked Kaepernick. And uh, I would throw Chip Kelly into that. I disapproved of the way he uh, went about his political stuff in the locker room, but that's not why I disliked him. Like that's between him and his and his teammates and him and his coach. And the fact that Chip Kelly didn't care was probably one of the reasons why Chip Kelly wasn't winning. Um, I also felt that Kaepernick was talking about that because he was trying to change the subject from his failing career. Uh, but I think the reason I, I didn't like covering him was way before that. Not because that's when he was down and out. 
he had he had gotten embarrassed uh, when Jim, Jim Tom Sula was the coach. He got benched essentially for Blaine Gabbert. He was losing with Chip Kelly. He was changing the subject. When he was really, really good and the Niners were winning and he was going to playoff games, he was just really, really like almost sadistic with the media. The way he would set up. He Remember, first of all, he came after Alex Smith, who was like the most aw shucks, professional, whatever you need kind of guy to cover yeah. ever. Yeah. And he would go to like a big podium and do a whole press conference every week and answer all your questions and try hard. Kaepernick, as soon as he became the starter, was like, well, I'm not doing that. I'm staying in the locker room and I'm going to stand in front of someone else's locker. And it's going to be funny. And then when they, and then I'm going to move around and I'm going to have this like trail of journalists and, and photographers frantically running after me. And I'm going to giggle about it and demean these people. Like that was all, I can't forget that stuff. I've never seen an athlete do that. And I've always felt that he was the most narcissistic athlete I've ever covered ever. And it's like, there's a lot of narcissistic athletes. I mean, it's part of it. But like, wow, that's how I felt from like a tw like twenty four on. Because he when he got drafted, he was actually super nice. When he came from Reno, I remember his first press conference. He wanted to talk. He was smiling. He seemed happy to be there. A year and a half later, he like took on a persona, and it was like be as difficult as possible. I don't understand where that came from. Iggy at his first press conference, he had his parents with him. Yeah, it was incredible. A lot he of people so say sweet. it was Jim Harbaugh's influence, but Harbaugh never became that. I mean, Harbaugh's not like that. No, Harbaugh's not like that. No. So maybe that was a Collins interpretation of what Harbaugh would be, but that's not Harbaugh. I don't know what happened to him. Do you remember one time in a press conference, Iggy, I was so disgusted with him because he wouldn't answer. What he tried to do, and he was consciously trying to do it, was answering fewer words than the question. It, yep. And I got so disgusted. I got so disgusted with him. I said to him, when you have lunch, do any of the players have lunch with you? I remember I asked him that. And he, because um, the answer I, was no. He would sit by himself and listen to his uh, yeah. earphones. Uh, and what's yeah. crazy is if you go back and watch interviews of him at Reno when he was a starting quarterback for like four years, he would give long answers. He was super engaging and, and, and happy. He just, I don't know what happened to Colin Kaepernick, but I don't think... I think fame got to him quick. He he became like the most famous quarterback in the world overnight. And it just, uh, I don't know if he was ready. It changed him. Yeah. Or so look, him. I have no idea what he's like now. He may be wonderful. Maybe if we met, he and I could be friends. I'm only talking about the time I covered him. And I would say he's the most difficult athlete I ever, well, Barry Bonds is up Barry there. Bonds. I, I, woo, I ever had to cover. Um, and I would also say I hated to be around him. I couldn't stand to be around Kaepernick. That's that's how much I disliked him. Yeah, I mean, he he had such disdain and disgust and disrespect for all of us. It was hard yeah. to like him when he clearly didn't respect any of us. Uh, hold on. Brother Bob says Papa Cone is 0%. Papa Cone 0% is harsh, but reality many ignore. Going back to the Kyle Shanahan's chances of winning a Super Bowl. Matt McEwen, member for eight months. Thank you, Matt McEwen again. I, I suck. I'm late. How are you guys doing today? I'm in a good mood today. Thanks, thanks, Matt. Jesse Jr. Hey, Lowell. One of my favorite all-time players was Bryant Young. As a kid, seeing his leg break left me speechless. Any insight on what kind of human he was? I have to say, I didn't know Bryant Young all that well, but everything I knew about him, he was the most decent guy, and I know that his teammates um admired and respected him. So I've only know that he's a great guy. And, and I'll player. never forget when I was about 10 years old, 10 or 11, Steve Mariucci was the coach. You went to cover a training camp practice. And back then you, some certain journalists would get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with the coach who would reveal things. And yeah. I think he told you like, Hey, Lola, do you want to see how we grade our players? Yeah. And you said, yeah, I would love to see that. And he, I think Steve Mary, she said, who do you think our highest graded player is? Probably think it's Steve Young or Jerry Rice, right? And you said, yeah. And he said, wrong. It's Bryant Young. You don't understand how incredibly good this guy is. I remember you telling me that when I was 10 yeah, and it blew my mind. That really happened. And yeah. you know, Iggy, it makes me, when you tell me that story, it makes me sad because you can't ever have time like that with a coach anymore. Mm -hmm. Mariucci Look, I don't think he was he was a good coach, not a great coach. He's a nice man. 
Yeah. And and I, I would sit and I would talk to him alone. His father, um, I think his father went to Michigan State. Iggy, Michigan State was a boxing school. Mm. He had a scrapbook because he knew I was a boxing guy. We went through the scrapbook about boxers and some of them I knew because they had become pros. It couldn't happen now. Mm -mm. It makes me so sad what has happened covering football. It used yeah. to be when I would go there, I knew that every time I went, I would have an experience yeah. that I would talk to someone and it would enrich my life and maybe his life. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, uh, for, according to what I'm observing, it's not like that at all anymore. No. No. It's like, you know, when they do a show on Monday night, they do, when, when, when they have a game, they often have a production meeting with the announcers so that the announcers know what the hell they're talking about during that game. I mean, that's sort of like what he was doing with you, Mariucci, having a production meeting with you. Hey, Lowell, I know yeah. you're going to be writing about my team. I want you to really know. So why don't you come in and come to my office, and I trust you. You're not just going to put this out in your column, but you should know that we actually think Bryant Young's our best player. And let me make you a little bit more educated about our team so that when you give strong opinion, opinions, at least you know what you're talking about. Yeah, it was generous. And again, Iggy, we were alone. There was no public relations guy. Right. Now, if you get an appointment with the coach, which is, I think with Kyle, it's probably hard. The PR guy would have to sit there as if, you were going to try to trick him or louse or him up him. or punch, or punch him. him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like almost like secret, secret service, like uh, not too close, buddy. <laughs> yeah. So what I want to say is it makes me long for, and maybe that's another reason my list of people is from the old Super Bowl teams, because it was so casual. I mean, at the end of the day, I could just walk into the locker room and hang around. You can't do yeah. that now. And, and Joe and Ronnie, they weren't in a hurry to leave. They would sit around and you'd talk and you'd talk like, not like friends, but like human beings. Mm. And Joe was always cautious with me. He was never, ever rude to me. I don't, I hope I wasn't rude to him, but we would sit and talk yeah. you know, like, like people. Yeah. I remember the first time I met Charlie Young that, you know, they used to practice in, in um, Redwood City. Charlie Young was a, a, is a devout Christian. And I don't think he knew I was a Jewish guy. So uh, after a practice, it was, you know, it was late. It was, I was leave. I was living in Palo Alto at the time. And I came out to the parking lot and there's Charlie. And he starts lecturing me about Jesus Christ and all this. And, and it was, I said, Charlie, I'm a Jewish guy. He said, ah, okay. And so, we, so let's talk about something else. And over the years, I had so much fun with Charlie Young. He's brilliant. And whenever we would talk one time at, at, up at Rockland, he knew that they had brought in Russ Francis and he knew that uh, Bill was going to get rid of him and, and go with Russ. So he said, I, this couldn't happen. And he says, you know, Lowell, I know you want to interview me. There's a little creek here. There's a little creek uh, up uh, in Rockland. Let's walk over to the creek and you can interview me there. Can you imagine going with uh, anybody on the Niners? No, they would season? send a PR guy. <laughs> the creek. And that's why the PR guy is there. It's not just because they don't trust you. It's because they don't trust the players, the coaches, like Good that. Point. We got to make sure we know what's being said in our facility at all times. Okay, so we're by the creek, and it, a little crawfish crawls out on a rock. So I say to Charlie, hey, look, there's a crawfish. He goes, no, no, that's a lobster. So I said, as far as I know, Charlie, lobsters are salt water creatures. He says, I'm telling you, well, that's a lobster. Well, Iggy, I got such a good column out of debating if whether it was a crawfish or a lobster. It was so much fun. And then I saw him about a year later. He says, I knew it was a lobster. I'm just breaking your chops. <laughs> I mean, I knew it was a, craw a crawfish. I was just breaking your chops. And Iggy couldn't happen now. No, no. Matt McEwen says, I want to hear Lowell's story about Crabtree. I told it. A few days ago last week yeah that's the story that's you chased story. him out you put the microphone right in his face smoky silky smooth smithers says how's it going fellas best duo would mahomes allen or lamar level up to 90s and 2000s defenses Whew. boy that's a tough one for me um i'm not that good on technical I think mahomes stuff would be good in any i think mahomes would be good in any i think allen yeah. would be good in any i mean they, quarterbacks do more interceptions back then so allen would be even more 
accepted yeah. in Lamar. And, okay. It's interesting. What I th- here's what I think about Lamar. Yeah. I think in his running, he could have been great in any era. I I have said this before. I think he's a, a really a below average passer, especially yeah. in important games. I'm sorry. He he's hasn't a great played weapon. Well he just yeah, hasn't. He's a great weapon. Yeah. So, but the other two, I mean, I, I, I would be phenomenal. I was so impressed with Lamar when I saw him in person against the Niners. He was great that game, but he really hasn't played well in the playoffs. Yeah. Um, Manny PSF 95 says, can you make a case? Any quarterback in the NFL other than Mahomes is worth 50 million a year. No other quarterback is making the Super Bowl with that little cap space. It's a good point. Well, Ig- Iggy, um, if you pay that much for a quarterback, you're not paying on your offensive line. I mean, that's a lot of other players you're not paying. And if you're yeah. paying as much for your quarterback as the Chiefs are paying for Mahomes, you're already at a at a disadvantage because <laughs> you're not getting the bang for your buck that they are. That's a good point, Manny. Daza says, Grant, you mentioned the difficulties in doing a video talk on YouTube with current players. Is it possible to do something with older players? Vernon Davis, Patrick Willis, Frank Gore? I would think so, yes. I'll reach out. We got, we got another topic. Do you think the Niners ever will move back to San Francisco? Absolutely. Yes, I do. Uh, now, not in my lifetime, um, but I've been around so many teams. And first of all, I don't think teams really care about the city that they're in. They say they do, but I don't think they do. And with the Niners, it's not even a, a, an imponderable. They don't get along with the with the government of Santa Clara. No. The mayor of no. Santa Clara won't go to 49er games. She doesn't. Right. That's how much she doesn't like them. Um, I think what's going to happen at some point, they're going to dump. I don't know what their lease arrangement is. It could happen 50 years from now. They're going to dump Santa Clara and leave those poor people with the stadium. Mm-hmm. And they're going to go back to San Francisco. And the, and the selling point will be we're going back to our roots. Yeah. We're going back to our roots, to where to where we really belong, to the Golden Gate Bridge and the mm-hmm. Bay Bridge, and you know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, and Golden Gate Park, and uh, we, we don't know why we left in the first place. And now, uh, where will it, they find the space? I think the Warriors took the space they could have had. Yeah, uh, and, and it just goes to show how good Joe Lacob is. Um, I think they'll find a place and they'll go back to the city. What do you think, Iggy? I think so too, because what Levi Stadium is is just it's boring. There's nothing particularly exciting about it or unique about it. It's not in San Jose, it's in Santa Clara. It's not near anything uh unique. It's it looks like an office building. It, it's and when they built it, I think they thought, well, we'll have the most up-to-date state-of-the-art stadium on the west coast so we'll get all these super bowls they're going to get a super bowl in a couple of years but the stadium in la is nicer the stadium in vegas is nicer uh it just seems kind of out of date and that we haven't even talked about the fact that they can't play home games in september because people will die of heat stroke right right yeah other than that it's a great place yeah but uh, uh, again it doesn't even matter whether it's a good place or not I'm saying the Niners are going to realize that it's going to be better for them to be back in San Francisco. Yeah. There'll be more, more cachet for them yeah. actually to be in San Francisco. Yeah. They'll get a better stadium in San Francisco and they'll leave these poor people high and dry. Yeah. And they'll say, thank you very much for helping us. And Hey, maybe the mayor of Santa, Santa, uh, Santa Clara will be happy when they leave. Well, I, you know, the soccer team can go back to playing there. <laughs> I'd have to say the Chronicle, um, Ryan Krojcik and Lance Williams are all over uh, the disputes between Santa Clara and the, the Niners. And when I read this stuff, the, um, the Niners do not look all that good. Yeah, and I've and heard uh, the Chronicle ask Jed York about this the last couple months, and he's never prepared for the question. He always looks surprised offended and he just basically says i don't want to talk about it which isn't yeah i want to talk answer. about i want to talk about football right like he's a football guy i want to talk about the job yeah. you do or the scandal yeah. you're in yeah so anyway yeah. that's that's what i think i i i think 
at some point they're going to go back to the city and it'll be a big campaign and they'll get season ticket holders. And yeah, I mean, you could see how that would work, right, Iggy? Yeah, I would agree. And it'll be like, yeah, it'll be a whole marketing thing and they'll go back and they'll be in San Francisco for like 30, 40 years and then they'll move back to the South Bay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's how it'll go. Uh, hold on. We got Jesse Jr. over here. Jesse Jr., if big if they ever left, what city would you like to see them go to that doesn't have a team? The, you mean the Niners? What city? Oh, instead of that, what city would you like to see have a football team that doesn't have a football team? Okay. Oakland. Oakland would be good. Oakland. Do you think a team will ever come back to Oakland? We just lost all three in four years. I've never seen anything like no, it. I know it's, it's sort of, it's like takes it's your breath away, right? Yeah. I mean, it's almost impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Why not go for the whole trifecta? Why not just <laughs> lose one? No, how about all three? <laughs> Fuck it. Uh, I think they could knock down the, you know, the stadium they have there and they could put up a beautiful football facility. And I do think there are a lot of people in the East Bay that would um, su support a team. So I think that's one place. I always wondered if uh, Portland could um, support a football. That would be interesting. I'm thinking in terms of like road trips I'd like to make because basically my travel is covering football games. So yeah. cities I don't get to go to. It'd be nice if San Diego had a team again. I would. I, it would have been cool. It's cool to have San Diego. In the, I like San Diego. And LA is I mean, wonderful. Yeah. I like LA, but not where they put the stadium. Nothing against Inglewood, but there's nothing to like walk around there. It's not a really exciting road trip the LA one yeah. now. San Diego would have been nice. Memphis would be cool. I've been to Nashville. Never been to Memphis. That's a basketball town. Yeah. Memphis would Memphis, be interesting. Yeah. How about Salt Lake City? <laughs> um, Not an exciting place. No. Okay. Fair enough. Mm, they got a lake. Lakes are good. <laughs> Lakes are good. Lakes are good. Any other places? I'll think about it. Thank you, Jesse Jr. Gold towel, Oakland Chiefs. The Chiefs would move to Oakland? I don't think so. That'd be nice. Yeah, I don't think so. Mm -mm. Well, that's the show. Cone Zone. We did it. Dad, you did a great job. You did a really good job, Biggie. You did a great job. <laughs> I'll okay. Talk to you. Okay, I love you. I love you too, Dad. Thanks, everyone.